Hi everybody, I wanted to show you today how I got um, Breakout to work on my Raspberry Pi. This is my uh, Raspberry Pi that's got RetroPie installed on it. Um, I've got the ICO Duo adapter um, and just a screen. And then I've got uh, four paddles connected here because I wanted to get four player uh, uh, Breakout and Warlords and many of the paddle games working. And uh, historically, you know, up to this point, uh, you couldn't really get these paddles to effectively work very well, but now you can see I guess I move the paddles left and right It's uh, uh, Positioned extremely well, and I can move it with a very high precision. So as I uh, move the uh, Mouse I'm not the mouse as I move the paddle um, It can actually work quite well, and it's quite jitter free and It moves uh, very very perfectly with absolute positioning and the way uh, we got this to work is I worked with the RetroArch uh, developers and the person who was uh, porting the core and mapping the core of Stella to RetroArch worked with me to add absolute positioning. So let's get started and I will show you how I got this to work and we'll take it uh, step by step. So first uh, I'm going to exit back uh, out of here uh, into the uh, standard emulation station. The first thing you want to do is, um, you know, go to your menu, um, whatever, whatever uh, button you've got set up for menu. Uh, for me, it's uh, the start button, uh, which I've mapped to this button here. But you can map any of these buttons on the top as well. And I'm going to actually show you how to do the mapping. So first step is when you connect your devices, um, and you can be with your own joystick or whatever uh, separately. On a different USB port and come to this menu and then once you're in this menu um, just go down to configure input and go ahead and uh, press the bu button uh, the fire button oops I pushed uh, back sorry about that let me do that again menu oops uh, menu configure input uh, press the fire button it'll say do you want to uh, Configure inputs, click uh, the fire button again. Now it's waiting for you to press a button on uh, whichever controller you want to configure. So this is my first paddle, which is connected to the first port here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press the button on this because that's what I want to configure. And notice that it went into configuring this gamepad. Um, and then what you want to do is, uh, there's no direction up and down on this particular paddle, so I'm going to just skip, skip these. And for start, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press uh, one of these buttons. You can use any of them. I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Um, and then you can see it uh, picked up button 8, but yours could be a little bit different depending on the button you press. And then for select, I'm going to go ahead and press the button next to it, which is this one. Uh, and you can pick any other button you want. And then button A is my fire button, uh, which is very important. Make sure you push the button on the mouse. And then button B, uh, you want to press this second uh, paddles button. So that's uh, going to be button uh, 1. So button 0 and 1 are, should be the ones you have for button A and B. And then for X and Y, uh, pick another couple buttons here. I'm going to use this for X, this for Y. Uh, so those are selected and then uh, for my shoulder I'm not going to pick anything and uh, then you're going to go down to a very important area which is your um, left analogs and these are the ones that are mapped uh, to the paddles so on the left analog up and down up and down represent the second paddle and then um, the left and right uh, are going to represent this uh, first paddle. So uh, it's asking for analog up. So I'm going to go ahead and get to my second paddle. And then I'm going to, now up is going to be to the left and then back. And as you do that, um, it didn't quite register correctly. So I'm going to go back again, analog up. And on analog up, I'm going to go um, left. And then back, and then you can see it went to access minus one, and then down I'm going to go to the right and back, 
and that should be x is 1 plus. And then now it's asking for the left and the right. So that's my you know, primary paddle, my number one. So I'm going to do left and then um, back to normal. You see it became x is 0 minus. And then right, I'm going to swing to the right and back to center. And then you can see it did axis uh, 0 plus. And then the final thing that you want to set up, go all the way down here. And for your hotkey, make sure you pick uh, the same button you used for select. I use this one, so I'm going to press it again, which was button 7. And that hotkey is important because when you press the hotkey and your fire button or button A, at the same time, you're going to get into uh, the quick menu, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Uh, okay, we're done here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, press OK, which is basically your fire button. Um, and then I'm going to come out of the menu because we're done with the menu, which is uh, back button. Okay, so now we've uh, configured uh, this uh, controller so that it sees the emulation station. Uh, so in fact, if you move your um, mouse one, I mean your uh, paddle one to the right and then back, you'll see now it's navigating through the menus. So I'm going to go to 2600 here. And then the next step uh, we want to do is we want to make sure you've configured RetroPie uh, emulator for LR2014 and you need to install the latest update. So, um, so this is an update that we just did. Uh, which is 3.9.3 .3 and above. So um, I'm going to show you how to do that. So first uh, go to your RetroPie um, area here and then go to RetroPie Setup. And then uh, once you're in a setup area, um, yeah, I'm going to get closer, you're going to see uh, Manage Packages. So go to Manage Packages and then go to down one to Manage main packages. And then uh, these are all the different uh, emulators or cores. So we're going to go down to LR Stella, which is your Atari 2600. But uh, you should make sure that it says LR Stella 2014. Some of the old uh, RetroPies don't have 2014. So if you have an older RetroPie, you're going to have to update it. But this is uh, LR Stella. Uh, Stella 2014 and um, go ahead and press OK and then make sure um, that it says update from source if it doesn't say from source if it says from pre-compiled library you want to go down and say install from in my case it says pre-compiled library uh, binary but for you it might say install from source so make sure you pick the option that says from source either update from source or install from uh, source. So mine says update, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK, go ahead and update. And it says, are you sure you want to update? I'm going to say yes. OK, so it goes through, connects to, make sure you're connected to the web, obviously. You know, I've got uh, a wireless network here, so it's connecting to uh, through my Wi-Fi. And if you don't have a network connection, you're going to have to uh, maybe download the core and there's a long set of instructions how to update the alert Stella manually so it's much easier if you just connect to the network and make sure that uh, you've got connectivity and let it do its thing here and it takes a couple of minutes not too long I'm gonna push pause here and come right back and alright so it looks like it finished it just came back to the menu so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down to uh, my OK, and click, and oops, I made a mistake. I didn't press OK there. I need to uh, push back. OK, so now we're installed, and we're going to make sure the version's correct, and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and push back back exit so we're going to exit out and go back into emulation station and uh, 
we're going to go ahead and start uh, one of the games and then we'll go into configuration and you'll see how it works. So um, I'm going to go to 2600. 2600 here. And I'm going to try to start breakout. Okay. So when I start it, uh, first things first, you'll notice that uh, it said, uh, and I pressed a key so you can, it gets to the menu. Uh, so it's important that you just go ahead and quickly press the key. You can see that uh, my default uh, emulator for 2600 says LR Stella 2014. If it's not uh, set to that for you, um, make sure you say select uh, uh, the default emulator to be correct. And then once you've got it correct, then uh, click launch. So this is going to start the game. All right, so now we're in the game, uh, and don't worry, uh, your mouse, uh, you know, your, your paddles may not work. Mine's already configured, so it's working fine. But for you, it might not work because you haven't configured the settings uh, for Stella yet. So remember, we uh, mapped the select button um, to your hotkey. So I'm going to go ahead and press my select button and the hotkey I had selected. Um, and it uh, takes me to the menu. I believe it was the select X uh, is what I pressed. Um, so once you're in a quick menu, um, what you want to do is um, push back button uh, because you want to go um, out of the quick menu. And then uh, now you're in the main menu. And on the main menu, go down to um, settings. Um, go down to input and then go down to port 1 controls okay and by the way at the bottom you'll see um, you know I've got Stella 2014 3.93 that's the version that you want to make sure you've got installed or above that if you got 3.9.1 or .2, that's not going to have absolute positioning for paddles. Um, and the way you know that is if you look on the top, for my device type, um, I can you know go left and right to change them. Um, normally, the only options on the older versions were none or gamepad, um, and I believe there was also uh, yeah I think those are the two only options. But now there's this third option, which is paddles. Uh, Stella adapter okay so make sure you pick uh, this one here and then um, the other one that's really important is make sure your analog to digital is set to none and then your device index should say your uh, whatever port that you connect it to you know in this case it's port 1 and then uh, my controller 2 is second it's uh, so, contr so port 1 is these two here and port 2 is these two here. So um, let me show you that real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and push back because we got these two set up correctly. And then uh, port 2 controls. This is players two, uh, 3 and 4. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that. And I'm going to go to um, the device type should be make sure again it says Stella adapter. This one says none, which is correct. Make sure it says none. And then the device index, you see here it says number two instead of number one. If it's not set to number two or set to your regular gamepad or something, change it to your Stella adapter second port. You know, if you've got the iCode adapter, make sure uh, you do what I just did. Okay, so I'm going to push um, back here. And then. Uh, we're going to go back to um, main menu, which is the back button. Okay, and then we're going to go to, um, I think it's configuration. Let me double check here. Yes, configuration. I pushed back menu, sorry. Um, once I pushed back, um, uh, we're out of settings. Now go to quick menu 
and then once you're in quick menu um, you're going to go down to options this is very important under options um, make sure you select uh, these two here and change your sensitivity to 14 that's how I like it uh, if you like your paddle to be more sensitive you can change that to be higher again this is only on this version of 20, uh, Stella 2014 or higher uh, you may not if you don't have these settings then um, you don't have the right version and then uh, the center offset uh, the, the higher the number the more offset it is to the right so I've uh, centered this uh, very nicely at 10 seems to be the right setting for my adapter for your adapter it might be a little bit different but experiment with 10 and start with that and then uh, once you got these two set up um, you're gonna have to also check the controls here in the quick menu area so on the controls um, you know double check your port 1 controls here too just like you did in the settings make sure those two top lines say Stella adapter and none and then uh, do the same thing for port 2 if you've got two ports again it says uh, Stella adapter and none which is correct and then finally save your game remap file because this will save these settings for breakout uh, because I am in breakout when I pressed these keys so next time you start breakout it'll automatically uh, put these so as I said save it said successful and I am done so I just push back back and then go into quick menu and then resume okay so now you can see um, as I move the mouse left and right so you can see my action here so um, it's following my mouse very nicely and then I've got these buttons for select and start so I'm going to push start and then push my paddle A button and here we go some live action excellent so uh, just to show you real quick I'm going to go ahead and push select and uh, go to a four player game so here you can see and I want to push start here oops I went to game two sorry I'll go to a four player game here we go push start so you can see the mouse one um, which is this one here controls uh, this mouse here I'm sorry this paddle works on player one on the left and then player uh, three so these are the team two player three and player four so player three is going to control these guys so we're uh, player one and player three go head to head and we'll start one here and then if they lose then it goes to the next two players which is player two um, which is the green here and player four which is the yellow so you can see all four are working very nicely uh, pretty jitter free and uh, very impressive device if you need one go to the icode.com website and you can get them there and if you need any help just uh, email me and I'll be glad to help Hope this was helpful and I will be posting another video for Windows RetroArch uh, soon, but this was a RetroPry uh, configuration. Hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and stay in touch. Bye.